guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math video for you guys. Today we are looking at lesson 6.6 .6. and in lesson 6.6 .6, we are going to be looking at how we can use arrays to help us with our division problems. Now we work with arrays in previous chapters before when we were just looking at multiplication, but today we're gonna look at how we can use arrays to help us not just with multiplication, but also with division, and then how those arrays help show us the relationship between multiplication and division. So I am going to, you know what, set up my board, get you guys some examples, and then come back with some closing thoughts, and then that will be it for this video. All right, so let's get started with our first example. In our first example, we are asked how many rows of five are we going to be able to create if we have a total of 30 counters? So the first thing that you wanna do is to establish your five rows. And this is what should feel familiar to you when we work with our arrays in previous chapters. So I like to start by establishing my rows. This is going to be row one, row two, row three, row four, and row five. Remember, rows are the things that are going from left to right across. So I'm just establishing the five rows that I need to create, knowing that I only have a total of 30 counters. Now, when I establish those five rows, I should also recognize that now I've placed five counters out of a total of 30. And that's very important for me to keep in mind as I continue through this problem. So I have my five rows established. I know that I need 30 and I know that I've put 25 down so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep putting down my counters one at a time until I get to that magic number of 30. And I'm gonna put one counter down per row because I need to make sure that in this process, I am creating five equal groups. This rows of five represents five equal groups. So I have five there, this would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I still have five rows, row one, two, three, four, and five, and now I've put down a total of 10 counters. I still need to put down 20 more. So this is 10, this would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, almost there but not quite, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Still not quite there. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, now I have hit that magic number of 30. I have five rows established, row one, two, three, four, and five, and now I need to figure out well, what is the answer to that. If I have a total of 30 counters and I need to arrange those in five rows, how many counters are going to be in one single row? So if I look at just one of the rows, how many is gonna be in there? So I'm gonna count. There's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. And because I was very careful and placed my counters down one at a time, I know that each of the following rows, so row two, row three, row four, and row five all have six. But just to be on the safe side and just to prove that point to you guys, I'm gonna count each of those rows and make sure they all have six. So I know that this one had six, check. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, good, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, good, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, good, check that off. One, two, three, four, five, six, good, check that off. So I know that if I have five rows and I have 30 counters that each of those rows will contain a total of six counters each. So let's look at another way that we can use this array and let's ask ourselves, going back to what we've learned before, okay, if I look at this array, is there a related multiplication sentence that I could write to match this? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my multiplication symbol down here. I'm gonna put a blank there and a blank there. And I remember from previous chapters that when I'm writing a multiplication sentence that is related to an array I've created, the first factor is gonna represent the number of rows that I've created, and the second factor is gonna be the number of columns. So remember, rows are going across, and columns are, are going from top to bottom. So if I look at the number of rows, I have one, two, three, four, five, 
So I'm going to put a 5 there. And if I look at the number of columns I have, which are going from top to bottom, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I'm going to put a 6 here. So my related multiplication sentence for this array would be 5 times 6. And I also know from this array if I have 30 counters and I need to make 5 equal groups, that each group will have six counters each. So I'm gonna do one more example with you guys on this. All right, here we have our second example, and in our second example, we are told that we need to take 24 counters and arrange them into four equal rows. Same thing, we know how many counters in total that we have, we know how many equal groups we need to create and we know that it's four because we're putting them in four rows but we just don't know how many is going to be in each row if that's the case so we're going to start again by establishing our four rows this is going to be row one row two row three and row four i just like to get that out of the way as you guys know i also need to make sure that i know that by establishing my four rows I have placed four out of the 24 counters, and so I'm gonna to continue to count from there. And I'm gonna go one row at a time, placing one counter at a time. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So I have successfully arranged 24 counters into four rows, and now I need to look at this and say, okay, what does that mean? If I do that, how many counters are going to be in each of my rows? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, so I have six there. I'm gonna check my other rows to make sure that they're the same because I have to make sure I've created equal rows or equal groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, good. And one, two, three, four, five, six, good. So I've done that correctly. Now, let's push ourselves a little bit more with this particular example. Let's go ahead and say to ourselves, well, if I had to write a division sentence to represent this array and what I've done when I've taken my 24 counters and arranged them into four equal rows, I'm gonna ask myself, okay, well, how many counters did I start with? I know that I started with a total of 24 counters. So I'm gonna write that down, that's what I started with. And how many rows did I divide them into or how many equal groups was I told that I needed to create? I needed to create four rows, which means I was told to put them into four equal groups. So I had 24 counters. I had to divide them or share them into four equal rows, which represents my four equal groups. And I wanna know, well, when I did that, how many counters did I have in each of my equal groups? Well, I know that I had six in each of those equal groups. So I know that 24 divided by four would equal six, looking at that array. Same thing, we can also look at this and come up with a multiplication sentence to match this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down my multiplication symbol. I'm gonna create a space for my first factor and a space for my second factor. And let me move this up a little bit because I can see that you guys cannot see that very well. So first factor, second factor. I'm gonna make sure that I know that my first factor represents how many rows I've created. I created one, two, three, four rows. So I'm gonna write that as my first factor. My second factor represents how many columns that I create going top to bottom. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna make that my second factor. My product is going to be how many counters did I have in all? Well, I know that I had a total of 24 counters when I made that array. So that tells me that four times six has a product of 24. So that's it for the examples. I'm gonna go ahead and erase my board and then flip the camera around and give you guys my final thoughts for today's lesson. All right, so those are your examples. Okay, if I have X number of counters and I need to put this many in equal groups, how many groups am I gonna be able to create from that? So 
that's it for today's video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it, as you guys know. And in the meantime, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.